and that's what we did. That's where I got to know these guys. And I was pretty thrilled because, you know, uh, I was up in Ohio. I was just recently born again, you know. And I started then meeting people like Randy and, and Larry. Um, uh, Love Song, um, start, you know, Paul Clark, uh, Second Chapter of Acts. Meeting other artists that had a passion for the gospel and music and sharing Jesus, you know, through our music. Uh, it was pretty exciting times. I mean, you know, we came out of the 60s, and, you know, the Beatles broke up, uh, the Moody Blues were searching for answers too, and, <laughs> and uh, we found it in Jesus, and uh, he completed us, not only as people, as human beings, but as musicians. I really owe everything to God, and also my older sister who was instrumental in leading me to the Lord, and the same thing was happening all over the country. I mean, musicians were getting touched by God and the Spirit of God. And, um, it, was a, it was pretty exciting. In many cases, some of us, we left our careers behind what we thought would be possibly successful, successful uh, mainstream careers, we thought, without knowing what we were venturing into. And, but the Lord was leading us by, the, by His Spirit. Yeah. I say amen to that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I so want you guys to know it. that we are just really thrilled that you guys uh, put this release out. I, you've whetted my appetite. Really looking forward to it. You've been doing this for a while. Yeah. Was there ever a point you said, well, you know, I've, I've done it long enough. Maybe I'll just set the guitar down. Did you ever think you were going to do that? Well, you see, I, I can't really garner the normal work, so my <laughs> options are limited. <laughs> my That's options not, are limited, too. <laughs> That's not the answer. I, uh, I'll tell you, actually, the, the real answer for me is... There was a crossroads moment uh, back in the early 70s when I was uh, really being criticized by the very circle of people I thought would embrace me. And that was a lot of the conventional church. And they were just saying, how dare you cheapen the gospel? Your, your hair is too long, your pants are too tight, your music's too loud, you have too much fun. And I, I remember one night as a young artist and a young believer being so discouraged, I. I pulled my car over to the side of the road, I looked up at the night sky, and I said, you know, God, I think I'm done. I, I know you're real, and you've given me good gifts, and I'm going to go. I came to Los Angeles to, to play rock and roll and make a living and see the world. I, I'm going to go do that. Now, I, I'll be sure to put in a good word for you from time to time when it's convenient, but, but I, just, I just don't want a part of this anymore. These people, the very people I thought would support me, are they just seem so loveless and so narrow and I you know I just I'm gonna move on and th this is a crucial a pivotal place for me because as I started to turn in my heart toward my own agenda I felt God tap me on the shoulder and say well you you can go if you want um, and I've given you good gifts and you probably with tenacity you'll probably have a modicum of success but I promise you this my son you'll never be at peace because you are now, you're now a man who knows too much. And it's gonna haunt you for the rest of your life. Every night you get up on stage and you leave the audience with nothing more than a good time when you could have shared hope with them, it's gonna haunt you. So you have a free will and you do what you want. But, and, but, it, but I'm telling you the truth. And I remember looking up at heaven and I had this immediate dual response. I said, oh no. You mean I, I've got it? I've got to do this. <laughs> oh wait, wait a minute. No, I, I get to do this. This is a calling. Oh no, I got. You know, and I realized. Oh, so I got to be a servant and be an apologist and answer people in love, even when they're not loving, and um, and just let God breathe on that. And that was that's when I knew I, I just had to walk on in, in faith, until he, until such time as he tells me to stop. And that was 38 years ago. Well, it's great to see that you still have a great deal of sense of humor after all this time, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you look in the mirror, you know, it brings it out. <laughs> I think there are many intersections in our lives as, as, as artists and as musicians and as believers that we, co that we come to this crossroads oftentimes. Uh, for me, you know, it's been, you know, just I'm 58 years old now, and it's like I, I, I go through my insecurities about... You know, last night I played at the race event, and I was the, I was the oldest musician in the building, no, on the stage for sure. And I mean, that that's a challenging thing. But I still love to play, I still love to sing. Uh, I think 
the travel, the road thing is a little bit hard. Uh, it's harder. And I love doing studio work, and I love producing. I'm producing a couple artists right now. And um, one's a teenager and one's 60. Talk about <laughs> the expanse of uh, uh, diversity of, 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 of talent. So anyway, uh, going to keep on doing what we're doing. Yeah. Uh, we both feel extremely appreciated, and, and we feel blessed, the people that acknowledge us when we don't even expect it. It's happening these days. So many younger artists, successful artists say, yeah, I, I cut my teeth on your music, and you've really encouraged me. You know? So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you. That really, yeah, yeah, thank you. And that really does keep us going because you know, when you live your life and do your work show to show, week to week, you're kind of like the pebble in the pond. But then when you have that situation where you get a letter or you meet someone um, on the road and, and they, they let you know that, that God has used your life and your, and your work to help galvanize their vision, um, that's like the, you get the ripple effect of the pebble in the pond. And, and that's, such, that's so precious to us. So it, uh, it really does keep us keep us going, keep us grateful. And it's more, more than the music. I mean, yesterday I met a, a young lady from the Philippines who, in 1993, when I was on tour, uh, uh, we had a compassion presentation at my concert, and a husband and a wife uh, sponsored this young Filipino girl. And it, it's just, when I met her yesterday, she had tears in her eyes. I'm so grateful that, that it was at a concert. We both have been to Haiti and we've been uh, several countries, you know, with Compassion International. You've met the children you sponsor, I've met the children we sponsor. Yeah. And that is like, that's even better than the music because that's really changing the life. So I'm glad that we're a part of that. Yeah, because it gives us a forum. Um, this music ministry gives us a forum to articulate um, a more holistic approach to the gospel. Yeah. And then the bottom line is, you know, you look up at heaven and you think, how amazing that we get to participate at all in, in your eternal purposes. You know, that's, that's just a, a privilege that you can't put a price tag on. Well, it's been a real pri privilege for me to be here with you guys today. Thanks, Thank Dave. you so much. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Blessings, all of you out there lurking. Lur all of, I said blessings, all of you out there lurking behind your TV screens. I see you. They, I do. And they will be. Can I have snacks? Are there snacks? We're traveling musicians, musicians and free food. You never know when that's going to happen again. <laughs> <laughs>